Okay. <clears throat> okay, cool. So there was recently um, a poll from Monmouth University that put you at 13% appeal among young caucus goers behind Warren and Bernie. So do you think that being a more moderate candidate will hurt your support among young people at the caucuses? No, I don't. I don't think it will. I've, uh, I found as a professor at the University of Pennsylvania when I got out of, the, out of office uh, overwhelming support from students as well as uh, I have a foundation at the University of Delaware as well. And, uh, but that's not been my experience to have you know, trouble with young caucuses. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that your poll numbers among appeal with young people remains kind of low? Well, because uh, Bernie has been out there a long, long time running. And, mm -hmm. uh, he's, and to his credit, he's built up a base, and, uh, and, uh, and Elizabeth has as well. They've spent millions of dollars, and that's not a criticism. Mm -hmm. They've had the ability to do it. And uh, so I think that's the main reason is the organizational structure they've been able to put together. I got in the late very, race very late. Okay. And I did want to address something. Um, Anita Hill spoke at the University of Iowa last week, and she had said that it was too late for you to apologize for things that happened in 1991. And I know that you didn't directly apologize when other women said that you made them feel uncomfortable last spring. So I wanted to just give you a, the chance to say something to young women who want to caucus for you, but maybe that's a concern for them in making their decision. With no indication any polling data that's a concern because I get an awful lot of support. Uh, what the press has found out that uh, the most of the people you see in the rope line who come up and grab me and uh, hug me are women who have been abused, women who have lost someone, women who have lost a child, and they want to know. They just want to tell me things that are intimate about their circumstance, and they just want to be reassured it's going to be okay. You know, I'm going to continue to fight for what I fall for by setting up the It's On Us proposal nationwide, uh, moving again. We have to change the whole culture. When I introduced the violence, and by the way, I think Anita Hill deserves significant credit for, I had started the Violence Against Women Act before her testimony, um, and, uh, and she did not get a fair shake in the process, and I told her that, she knows that. It's not a question of apologizing, it's a question of how do we change the rules to be able to make sure that it doesn't happen again. We, by the way, we talked at length about, we saw what happened in the last judiciary hearing. I committed to two things when, in fact, I found myself uh, when, when I, uh, she, her t testimony was over. One, I was going to make sure never again would there be a circumstance where there were n no women on the Judiciary Committee. So I put two women on the committee. I campaigned for them on the condition that they would go on the committee. One was Carol Mosley Braun from Illinois, the other was Diane Feinstein from the state of California. And both are by co-chairs of mine. They're both supporting. And then when we, took, when we took office, I asked the president, he asked what I wanted, and I said, I want to bring the Violence Against Women office into the White House to give it more, more priority. He, gave, he allowed me to basically pick who would run the offices, and I brought in my people who helped me write the Violence Against Women Act. And, uh, and we, uh, but when I wrote the act, I said at the time that what we have to do is fundamentally change the culture in this country. Do you, you know what the phrase rule of thumb means? Mm -hmm. What do you think it means? You like, really don't know what it is, I don't think. You can't, you can't kid me like you, you don't expect me to kid you. I'll tell you the truth. Rule of thumb means it goes back to the English common law. In the English common law, a woman was viewed as a chattel, possession of her husband, like the dog, the pig. And in fact, so many women were being beaten to death by their husbands that the court of common law in the late 1300s came along and said, no man can strike a woman with a rod thicker than the circumference of his thumb sick. It's a cultural sickness we have, and it comes from our English jurisprudential system, not from any strange culture, from art, from a culture that built this country. And we have to change the culture. No man has a right to lay a hand on a woman, no matter what the circumstance, other than self-defense. And if a woman can't say yes, affirmatively say yes, when I go on campus and I started this It's On Us campaign, thousands of people show up. Thousands of people come to the gymnasiums, and I say, if you see, if you're a fraternity guy, and you see a woman being taken up the stairs because she, they, they, she, they've gotten her drunk, to a, uh, and a brother's taken her upstairs, and you don't speak up, you're a coward. You're a coward. We have to change the culture. Now, let, let, let her go for it, because I, 
I feel passionate about this, but go ahead. Just, yeah, can I just one more question? So um, first time caucus goers are trying to make their final decisions. So what message do you want to resonate with young people before they go on February 3rd? The character of the nation is on the ballot, for real. This is not who we are. This is a man who in fact does not, does not share the values of the Constitution. We the people or all these, all, you know, we hold these truths self-evident. All people are created equal. He doesn't share that. And it's damaging us not only at home, he's, he's pitting us men against women, the way he talks about women, the way he deals with women, the way in which he deals with the whole issue of race and the whole issue of framing people, just dividing us based on race, religion, ethnicity. And we've got to change it because our children are listening. People are being impacted by it. So when you talk about changing the culture, why not then directly apologize to those women who came out last spring? Because the women who came out last spring have there is, the women who came out last spring, there was some question about what the motivation was, because I didn't do anything wrong. But I did say that I have an obligation before I approach your space to say, is it okay to be in that space? And I've done that. I kept that commitment. I have done that. And, uh, and so far, I've had overwhelming support from women in this, in this race. And look, it's, it's about, uh, the most important thing, I think, is for a public official to have the empathy and understanding of what happened to somebody, what the problem is, to associate with them. Because you, 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 can't, um, you can't communicate change unless you can demonstrate you absorb what, in fact, is, be, is a problem the person talking to you has. And if I've ever stepped in front of a circumstance, and I have, if I've violated space that, in fact, is is inappropriate on their part, that, and anything, whatever they define is inappropriate. No one's ever accused me of doing anything totally wrong by touching a woman in a way or moving in a way that, but if you, if, like, for, for example, you know, I may have, uh, you know, 10 years ago, you know, be talking to you and say, well, here's what I don't want to think. Well, here, here's what I think. I have to, I have to understand things have changed. I can't do that. I can't step up. I can't unless I say, "Is it okay if I, if I touch you, if I shake your hand?" Is it okay? So, it's, it's things have changed, and as good as changed, and it's good because it's liberated my. I have a daughter who's a social worker, spends a lot of time de dealing with women's issues. That are, she has a master's from Penn. She's doing full time. I mean, my granddaughters. I have four granddaughters. They're all extremely talented, from law school to. You know, One's a Columbia Law School graduate, two are at the University of Pennsylvania, great honor students. My, you know, it's so I just think it's important that that as society moves, that all of us are aware of the subtle moves that are taking place too. But for me, I have two passions. One is to end end the culture of violence against women, and two, to cure cancer. Those are the two things that I'm going to do as president. And I wrote that Violence Against Women Act with my own hand. And you may not know this, but you can check with the need or anybody else. When I wrote it, women's groups didn't support it. You know what I had to do? I went to the university, I went to Rhode Island, the state capital, where all the providers were there running women rape shelters. And then I went to the state of Washington where that. And finally I got all the groups together in my office and said, these are the people who are doing the job. They think we should pass this law. And finally, Ellie Schmill said, look, why aren't we helping this guy? Let's get it passed. But for eight months, there was no help because they thought it was going to somehow impact on my dealing with the issue of uh, a choice or, or, or gender. And then I'm the guy, the first guy and major player in American history to come out and support gay marriage. And so there's a lot of pre prejudices that are built in that people think and presume that just don't exist. And there's many who still exist that think that somehow, somehow, a woman can deserve what she's getting. I've gotten the shouting matches in the hearing with Elizabeth. Anyway, the, the point is we've got to change the culture. We've got to change the culture. No man has a right to touch a woman without her informed consent. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. And by the way, the It's On Us movement is changing things. Because when I started up, when I did for, when I, when I,